This is the Crime Stopper room? Yeah, this is it. Oh, gosh. Um, where is Where is this mystery object? Y'all got it? Um, it's around here. I can't believe you didn't make your bed up. Did they not make your bed? Mm. No, I expected you to get in the morning, make the bed up, and... So Val tells me that y'all discovered this because of police ineptitude. We told them that, uh... <laughs> <laughs> because of their allegations, we were going through the, they were going through the files, looking for some of that stuff and making sure everything was where it was supposed to be. And we pulled that out while we were going through there and we're looking at it and it's all those little red dots. And I said, y'all better test it. Where, now, where was the blood brand? Right there. Right. Two right. metal beaters up. <laughs> They've had almost a year to investigate this case. And John Fogelman, I will tell you now, he needs to go into a new line of work. Uh, the infamous Inspector Gitchell is retiring, so John should take his position because he can solve crimes that nobody else can because he decides, I think, hmm, let's see, murders occurred on May 5th, eight months later. You know, we ought to go check that lake out and find a knife. And let's, and we'll find it in one hour. And then let's see. Without now, a metal detector. We're in the middle of the trial. We're in the third week of trial. I think I'll just go check this necklace that is not a part of evidence. We're not intending on introducing it because how can we? Because we have rested our case in chief. So we're not going to introduce it into evidence. And so I, he decides one night, well, I think I'll just, uh, hmm, there's some real red specks on there. I think we'll have it tested. After you've rested your case, you find this miraculous blood. They call the judge up and say, judge, we need a continuance. They don't call me, they don't call Rob, they don't call Val, they don't call anybody. They just get the continuance. They call the judge. You're not even supposed to do that. Everybody's supposed to be able to do it. It's supposed to be on the record. Court reporter's supposed to take it down. They are, they got a continuance. Wait. They've rested their case and they get a continuance. For what? You know, this is like, uh, you, you could tell the story to someone in, uh, in another state and they would say, well, you know, what's the, what's the punchline in a, in a, in a it's macabre, pathetic situation? What's, what's the, what's the, where are you going with this? No one would believe this whole, Val's already said they won't be prepared to cross-examine, and uh, and they're objecting to us putting it on and then leaving it overnight. There is no way that you can have this gap in time. I'm gonna tell you, there's all kinds of problems, John. You got a jury, some jury members camped there this morning, and that no, don't know what they were told. Other people called in, said don't come in because of what they heard on TV, and then and then Jim Taylor's telling it exactly like it is on TV. Yeah. I'd like to know where he got that. Val said, they said, no court tomorrow, jurors, you don't come in. And then right after that. The reason they is, is they're waiting on further testing from genetic design as to whether or not there's blood found on a necklace worn by Navy Nichols and Ivy's arrest that matches the victims. Now that's, that's somebody true. told him straight up. I agree with you, but it didn't come from us. The juror kind of overhears that walking by a TV or something. Oh, sure. And then it doesn't come back. You know, then it hurts our us. Obviously, it hurts us to even have the rumor out there. I don't know why. I just didn't know. They ran that. something on one of the Memphis stations where they ran it on Channel 8. But that didn't run. Well, they called me and asked me a hundred times to confirm or deny. I said, well, you just ought to watch Channel 8. They seem to know what they're talking about. What difference does it make now? It's out. What difference does it make? So, we all waiting for a phone call? In fact, I'm getting kind of close to 5 o'clock out there. And it's a quarter to 5 their time. This is John Fogelman. Got anything to report? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to go to the lab and he says he can probably tell me. Okay. Oh, You don't need to run for judge. Why? You need to take Gitchell's position. <laughs> you need to be the new inspector. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Mm hmm. Well, I think it, I think you need to keep telling the media that because um, 
they're, it really ought to come in court. Oh, I understand. And right, right. They, they're going to keep can't handing you. Whoa. Yeah, that's channel eight. Now, if you could just tell them to refer all questions to, uh, to, to us or somebody, and of course, what we're going to do is say we can't come yet. Okay. Oh, well, I understand. Okay. No. All right. Thank you, Mike. Well, of the two DNA types, there's more on there from Damien. And on the D1S80 test, they were able to get Damien's amplified, but on the other one, all they can get is the DQ alpha, which matches Stevie and it matches Jason. Or 10% or 11% of the population. What's the percentage, 10.11%. The question becomes now, should it go on when you got Damien's blood on it and you don't really know whose the other blood is? You can't say definitively. I think the, the key fact is that there is evidence from which the jury could infer that it's Stevie's blood. I think all they're told is, is it could be, all they, all, all they should be told is, it is that it is and branches. The, the, it shouldn't be any of this that it matches Jason's blood, too. I guarantee you we are not going to even suggest that that blood could be anybody else's other than Stevie's. Now, I imagine that from Val and Scott's standpoint, what they will want to do is to argue is, look, Jason and Damien are close associates, and that could be Jason's blood. And well, even if it said that it was, could, could be Jason's blood, that wouldn't be any evidence against Jason. Oh, it oh will come be, on, John. It come will on, be. come on, John. I don't understand. I mean, what? The only thing I see is. But y'all get up here and y'all get up here and argue that. No, we wouldn't. We'll agree not to do that. Yeah. You'll agree that you will not argue that it could be Jason's blood. No, we'll argue it's Stevie's blood. Yeah. If Damien gets up and wants to start sticking it that it could be Jason's blood. But, That's severance issues. But, well, how does it incriminate Jason? It incriminates him in the sense that it joins him at the hip. Sure. It's like, you know, these guys are such bosom buddies that they got blood on each other's necklaces. Well, to say and that, that could be an, a friend of Dane. It could be somebody else's, and it just so happens that his best friend's at the same time. That's what y'all gonna be. That's that's the argument. We're not gonna argue that. For sure you I mean, The thing that really bothers me is that if this evidence would have, if you'd have known about this evidence two months ago, and you, there's a better argument for severance. Fight's gonna be right now between uh, us and now we're fighting now. Now so we're gonna fight each other. We're gonna be fighting now. They're gonna wanna say it's Baldwin's blood. And y'all gonna We're gonna say we don't want it to be Baldwin's blood. When they start offering evidence against us, that's what a severance is about. See, I don't, of course, and I understand I'm looking at it from a different perspective, but I don't see that as being evidence against you. Then you get then you get to the overall problem though, John, is that, you know, is, is this is this one of those kind of situations where now the blood's gone now, it's just, it's a dead issue, correct? It's, See, it's, now it's we history. can't do anything with it. Except. So I mean it seems to me like it's you've almost got a four oh three situation and just and, and it did nothing none of it comes in. Because the test doesn't tell us enough. So it's definite, the blood's gone, and that, that's just definite finding. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean there's, he nothing didn't, else, there's nothing else he to, didn't he didn't indicate that he had... Y'all yeah, hadn't found anything else that y'all are going to pull on us tomorrow or Friday that y'all have got waiting on results on? No. You haven't gotten your magnifying glass out and found anything else, have you? The tests are running on this necklace. The tests are destructive. The, once they run this amplification test, the blood's gone. It can't be ever tested again. We didn't even have a chance to talk to the judge before they ran this test. To say, wait a minute, judge. You think we could go out and get an expert from another laboratory and come in and monitor the test and make sure that they do these things? There hasn't been, there hasn't, we haven't had fairness in this case from day one. We haven't had fairness in this case from the day they got a search warrant. We haven't had fairness, fairness from, the, from day one concerning the just numerous motions we filed. There hasn't been a fair day in this case. Of course, it couldn't have been a, couldn't have been a better type necklace. What is it? That looks sort of like what the executioner carried around, doesn't mm -hmm. it? 
we all we all agree to sequester the jury if we're good if we got to go to monday they've got all the evidence the community's got all the evidence everything's out everything is out this is the time that they are deliberating course, normally I, I would like it. of course i'd like to know too because i'd like i'd like us to get the thing done more entirely this case Look at my house. I see y'all tomorrow. All right. I think they just say it's one out of 11 or mm -hmm. deal with it like that. It's still good. Mm -hmm.